How's it going, everybody? A little late with uh, Tuesday Bible study. Better late than never. And indeed, ye do it toward all brethren, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And of course, the Holy Spirit will make sure that they increase more and more. If they're sheep, man doesn't do it. That's the parable. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we command you. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. See, when you die, you're asleep. So let's lead up to that. Indeed, you already know, show your love for all believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Uh, when people who are not believers will respect you the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. In other words, you know, be a worker, carry your own weight. Um, and we showed you yesterday how Paul, or the day before, how Paul was like, they weren't getting paid. They came and they worked. Tithing is Old Testament. Giving to preachers or churches is Old Covenant. Everybody just works and they tell the truth. It's just a, a community of the sheep. Sheep to sheep. And you live in the world and you just work and you do you just do your job. And you know that we will happen to believe. Okay. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to believers who have died. And it talks about their what? They're asleep. And Daniel chapter 12 says the exact same thing. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life, and the rest to their everlasting judgment. In other words, there's no reprieve a thousand years or ten thousand years or a certain time frame afterwards, like everybody gets to come back. No, it's everlasting. But they're dead, they're unaware. It's very obvious, and that's not properly taught today. But hell is not eternal torment. Hell, mean, hell meant the grave. And it says death and hell, death and the grave are cast into the lake of fire. They're already dead. When were they killed? Revelation 29, when the flame came down and devoured them. The whole eternal torment thing is just another one of those many lies, along with water baptism. It's a spiritual baptism now. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, which one is it? It's John the Baptist said, what will come after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The fire of the fiery trials of 1 Peter 4.12. Brother, concerning it, not strange, concerning this fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But I would not have you, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That's goats. Or if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we know that, again, you have to watch this from the from the beginning uh, of the playlist where I really covered what real belief is. It's not what you just say with your lips or what you think is in your heart. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus, and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. 
And John the Baptist said, what will come after me that will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Your faith comes by Jesus spiritually calling you to your gut, right in your heart. And then it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Your hope is your salvation. Faith is the substance. It's tangible. It's substance of things hoped for. Faith is tangible evidence of your salvation, comma, Hebrews 11, 1, comma, it's the evidence of things not seen. What's not seen? John 3, 8, the Holy Spirit is not seen. Faith is tangible evidence of your salvation. It's tangible evidence of the Holy Spirit. It is. That's what that's what real belief is. We know that faith without works is dead in James 2, 14 through 26. So for if we properly believe the proper call and the proper walk that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also would sleep in Jesus. Again, their sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say when he comes back to the earth. For that thousand year millennial reign whether it's literal or not for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive when the lord comes and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep again they're asleep the whole abraham's bosom and all, that's a parable you don't go to Abraham's bosom when you die. You're asleep. Your soul might be with God, but you are unaware of anything that's going on. It doesn't say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul said, willing rather. It's fascinating how everybody butchers the word of God because they listen to the wolves and sheep's clothing. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's the last trump, the seventh trumpet. The last trumpet of God's wrath during the trumpet, trump and bowl judgments. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. At the last trump Bible verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. So let's leave Thessalonians, come over here, where the same thing is told. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep again with a sleep. But we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye when at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. Daniel, you get the idea. So here it is, back to Thessalonians. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Hang on, let me load this video. Ooh, that's loud to me. Telling me recording's in progress. I got everything really jacked up. Let's turn it down. Spooked me. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So again, the earth will be very supernatural, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right, very good. We did not need a new living translation tonight. Yay. It's pretty easy. Let's uh, go to Daniel. Did I get rid of my Daniel study? Hang on. Let me load it up. I'm not even going to pause the video. It's just 8, 9 through 16. All right. Thank you for your patience. And out of one of them came forth a little horn. Again, that's the Antichrist of Daniel 7. Here it is again, or here he is again in Daniel 8, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. 
and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him, again, this is getting into the abomination of desolation, by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. You see, the remnant of God's seed of the Israelites, they are uh, keeping the Torah, they're being good Jews, uh, some are over there in the land, which is now spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Revelation eleven eight says clearly, and we know that the political world that is run over there is not anything to do with God of the Bible, even though they claim it. We know that Revelation two nine and Revelation three nine say they say that they are Jews but are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Anybody with any type of power like that that runs politically countries, especially that land. It is the synagogue of Satan. Of course it is. They've been causing all that strife and it's just it's never ending. And it will be the impetus of what begins uh, World War III. In my opinion, well, as soon as the Antichrist and his deadly wound and all that, which is what kicks it off anyway yea even he magnified himself to the prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifice was taken so it'll be a, a Jewish temple where he's going to perform the abomination of desolation because to the Jew the temple is still a holy place and after the last non Hebrew bloodline Israelite is called or quickened by the Holy Spirit at the very end when they're baptized by the Holy Spirit, and it just pops right into them, um, because it'll happen instantaneous. Um, like those fake preachers like to make fun of, and they smack people, and they go, whoo, and you know, people shake and fall down to the ground. Um, that's, of course, all fake stage stuff, but it'll be a literal quickening. That'll be taking place, and as soon as the last non-Hebrew bloodline is is called to Christ spiritually, um, and they come alive in Christ, uh, then that Hebrew bloodline that had been keeping the Torah and did not know Jesus, uh, they didn't believe in Jesus, they then will... Um, get the call but to them at that time right up until that time this jewish temple where he's going to perform this in and they will erect it they will put that thing i guarantee you it's prefab they will have that thing up and running during world war three it'll go up so at the end of world war three it'll be there and he'll claim to have risen from the dead and he'll be in that temple but he'll do an abomination in that temple He'll have the image that speaks there. Again, everything will be very supernatural. The false prophet will be there performing crazy miracles. And uh, anyway, it takes away the daily sacrifice taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reasons of the transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said to that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's not how long the great tribulation lasts. Great tribulation is three and a half days. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Why is it three and a half days? Per Revelation 11, 8, the church is the two witnesses. We're both kings and priests. There's five comparisons of the two witnesses to the church, both represented by candlesticks, both represented by olive trees, both persecuted by the Antichrist, both caught up to Jesus in the clouds. And at the end of their uh, issue with the Antichrist, uh, after after their death and so forth, there's a great earthquake. So 
and it's three and a half days. And we know that it's stated three and a half years in other places, but Jesus said what? He had to cut those days short. It goes from three and a half years to three and a half days. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Yuli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. But I read all that, and it came to pass, and even I, Daniel, even I, Daniel, in the vision, sought the meaning, and then behold, there stood before me the appearance of a man, and I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Yuli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. Anyway, I'm glad y'all are here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.